Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday, folks. And don't forget, you can get hold of Tim every trading day at Ord, O R D hyphen oracle o r c l e dot com that's odd hyphen oracle dot com tim odd what's going on brother well actually let's talk let's take a look at volume let's do a little lesson here cool uh can we go to can we go to chart two yep absolutely there we go okay all right chart two is the spy and i use both but it seems like spy you can use spx you can use spy but i found out spy volume you know, the ETF or the SPX is better than the SPX. But anyhow, uh, we last Friday, we got a kind of a blue dotted line there, and that's last Friday. We I see it. Up. Yeah. And if, you, and if you compare that volume to the previous high, which is uh, a week ago Wednesday. Yes. Uh, uh, okay, we gapped above that previous high and higher volume. So that's a legitimate breakout, and you left the gap there. So so now you broke a previous high and higher volume. You gapped up above that previous high, which is last Wednesday, Friday. So now we're testing Friday's gap. Right. Right? Yep. Okay. So as long as you test, so you broke above the previous high and higher volume, now you're going to go down and test the gap. As long as the gap is 10% lighter volume than when the gap occurred, the day of the gap, then this should be a support area. Right. Cool. Yep. So... Uh, so anyhow, so we just we gapped above a previous high and higher volume. Now we're coming back down to the gap, uh, most likely, or you know, because day's day's not over, but we got what a half hour to go, and volume is going to be lighter. It has to be ten uh, percent lighter. So we're probably going to find uh, support here, you know, day, uh, month in, and all this other stuff. So anyhow, that's how I'm viewing the market on a volume. That's actually going to be my report tonight. Nice. Now I can see it to, because we uh, we chart one. Yeah, because we're Go going ahead, into sorry. sixty-nine. You know, we're going into sixty-nine million, and you only get fifty right now. So, when most times yeah. you're not going to do nineteen million in you know forty-five minutes uh, with the thirty minutes. No. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. So, chart one, Tim. Right. Yeah, chart one. Okay, yeah, this cool. is the one I'd, I'd hope to uh, to kick in, which is a uh, the Zwag Breast Thrust Indicator yes. on uh, December or, uh, April eighteenth. We had a uh, uh, it turned up from below forty. And it needs to get this point six zero by uh, ten days. Ten days is tomorrow. Oh, bummer. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're not going to do it. You right. know, when I did this, uh, sent this to you with a um, report. Anyhow, it was point four eight. Okay. And the day before it was point five five. So really, today had to be an up day to really have this kick in. And right. you know, tomorrow is just. Uh, a great big day, but we're not going to get the, the Zwag breast thrust indicator, which is, you know, doesn't have to happen. But if you do get it happen, you get a lot more confidence that's going correct. forward. That's <laughs> correct. Until next time, yeah. Marty Zwag, <laughs> that's, uh, that's all yeah, we can do, right. right? Wow. So, but but you like to see them come off a of low. So this wasn't like a big decline. I think this is kind of a, a timeout and an uptrend. I think the bottom's in for the, uh, right now. Um, so... And the volume studies are actually coming in okay, so uh, let's see what chart three is. And tomorrow, Tim, is going to be a big day because what you have tomorrow, like the Fed start meeting today, they're going to come out at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon with their statement and then 2.30 with the news conference. So that's, of course, going to be all about interest rate structure, folks, but the bottom line is that <laughs> that's what rules the market. <laughs> that's for sure. So Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's, that's true. So I anyway, it's... it's probably they're anticipating whatever it is but you know it's unlike volume so it's probably going to be support but, i agree no you know, listen short, short. i i it, it it these days always get intriguing man because you know we always anticipate they're going to be huge and you know that's not real either do you know what i mean but it, it seems that when they like to kill the market Right before the Fed, and then all of a sudden, ba boom, they, they come in Darvish. We'll, we'll see whether he comes in Darvish. We'll see how that shakes out. But. So I, yeah. I have, I have yeah. chart three up here. Okay. All right. Chart three, kind of just, I wanted to point out kind of a selling climax going forward. And, you know, it seems like this, this is not, uh, anyhow, selling climax is when the volume jumps at least 30% compared to the previous day's trading. or Okay. Not necessarily, the, the, like, you, you look at last week's volume, you can compare it to what's currently going on. If you have a surge in volume, either up or down, 
at least 30% or higher uh, percentage-wise, then usually that stops the market either going up or going down. And we had, I uh, pointed out, a bunch of selling climaxes where the volume jumped at least 30% compared to the previous days. And if you notice, if you draw all those lines where those happen, pretty much you're setting at a low. And last time we had a big jump in volume came on April 19th. It's not quite, it looks like about 25%, but you know, it's, yeah. rules are not like set in stone. Right. But you did have a surge in volume on April 19th, and that uh, marked a low. Yes. You know, several years ago, when you got a selling climax, you always counted on that selling climax to be tested. Yes. Now, it, it doesn't, you know, some do, some, you know, a lot of them don't. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, but but the the three percent rule where volume jumps all of a sudden, it does stop the market. And so, but on April nineteenth, to me, I'm calling that the bottom. Right. And I don't think we're going to test it. Uh, so we're we're kind of just working up. Today we're testing a gap. I got that blue area is a gap. Right. We got a we got a gap above us too, up around you know four fifteen four twenty yeah. there, or excuse me, uh, five fifteen five twenty. You know, if we test that. On lighter volume, the first time it's going to stall it. If it uh, tested on equal or higher volume, we'll go through it. I think, in general, we're probably going to go through it because I think the trend's still up. Uh, the trend today, I was watching uh, Thinkorswim. Yeah, 1.28 on the trend right now, which is uh, decent. Yeah, so we got a little really fair going. A, right, there's no doubt. It's uh, not like... You know, like well, what happened last week, folks. We were going down, and and the trend was going down. So it was like, okay, hold it. That's not going to fly. Yeah, yeah, right. No, right. yeah. So that's that wasn't a good sign. Now we got the, going down. We got the trend. So they're probably you know they're they're doing whatever they need to do to to get everybody on the wrong side for whatever uh, announcement is tomorrow. So that's a fact. Stay um, right there. Folks, it, Tim and I are yeah. going to get you on the right side of this market. <laughs> uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 460. NASDAQ off 197. S&P's off 56. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's off 441. NASDAQ's off 197. S&P's are off 53. We're talking with our members to Tim Wood. We are talking markets out here. And the chart I have up, Tim, I have the third one up there. has the selling climaxes on it. Yeah, let's, let's go to chart four. Okay. Uh, chart four is actually we look at the top window. Uh, I see it. The RSI the yep. window is the uh, uh, the summation index. We talked about that last year. You know, when summation index hits below minus uh, seven hundred, which it did on October twenty seventh, and it has to rally two months and hit above uh, one thousand. It did on December twenty seventh. So that was a, a, a bullish intermediate term. Sign that opens the door for like a year rally or better. Yes. So it happens. So so that suggests we could rally possibly into October year end. Uh, on a on a nearer note, I put the RSI 14 in there, and this is a weekly chart. And uh, and I say uh, the weekly RSI between 80 to 85 is never the final high. Most of the, most of the time, you have a minor pullback before heading higher. Okay. So right going into the March high, we had right smack at right 85, I think it was. We backed off this month, April. And if, if you believe those, if you have to do the study and you go back to, I don't know, 1980 or something like that, when it hits, when you get that much momentum, when the RSI hits 80 to 85, like I said, if you go back to like 1980 or whatever you want to go back to, it's really never the final high because momentum is just too high. So the next higher high, either you blow off similar to what it did back in uh, 2019, you know, the RSI got up around 90 there, or okay. 95, I don't know what it was, but way up there. That's kind of a blow-off high. Or you go up, to, you know, it doesn't break 70 on the next time up. I see. So, uh, so this time, I, I think we're probably at a midterm low April 19th. The rally's actually started, and we're the next rally up. So either we go, we go into a, a blow-off high, RSI hits 90 or better, or we don't even make it back to 70. I see. And I see. That, that could set up. Uh, so this is months down the road because we got we got to have the market turn back up here, which is currently doing, but we haven't seen a new high yet. And so the momentum you, of the market is, is really strong right now, even though we pulled back this month. 
Right. And if you, so, you know, you've been following us, folks, okay? You know, Tim got this, you know, not only straight. If you remember, it just reminded me, Tim, when we were going through this on a monthly basis, because I remember at the end, we're at the end of April right now. And if you remember, at the end of March, the way this market was at the top, you specifically were saying that normally when we have the technical indicators that we had at the end of March would be April would be a down month. And, and you know, bottom line is that, that there's no doubt this is the first down month that we've had in a long time. So really cool yeah, call, man. First, there's no doubt. Right. Yeah. First down month we had. We had five months up in a row in April was a down month. And also, I don't have that. Yeah, we don't have it shown. But I also did the um, when the. The uh, trading range, or like the candlestick uh, part, on a monthly time frame, fifty percent closes above the mid Bollinger band on the monthly, or the upper Bollinger band on a monthly time frame. I've showed that several different times. You get fifty percent more than above that, you got too much momentum too quick, and that predicts which we did in March. We had fifty percent of the yeah, trading I'm range so, above I'm so the glad upper you brought that up, or upper Bollinger band. Right, because yeah. I forgot what the signal was, but I knew that it was there. Right, cool, man. That's because that. Yeah. That was the signal. That's, that's right. Okay. Yeah, cool. that was the signal. So that predicts next month will be a you know trading range month or down month or something. Right. And that worked out. You know, it's kind of a low tech indicator, but it's, you know over time it works. So I'll take it. Um, a low tech indicator. Yeah. Give it. Give me simple every single time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every yeah. single time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to five. Okay. This this is the one we got to you know we're kind of waiting here. And this I updated this just today. So the bottom window, we've been looking at this indicator for, I don't know, the last few weeks or whatever. Anyhow, the bottom window is a monthly XAU gold ratio. And this in, and this uh, graph goes back to 1984. Well, it hit a peak in 1996, 28 years ago, and I drew that trend line all the way down to the current time frame. And to get above that trend line, it would be a significant event in the market. Yes, because that trend line is twenty twenty eight years wow. going back, so it would, it would it would change the character of the market. And if you notice, the XEU ratio more or less has traded sideways since about two thousand fourteen. It really hadn't gone up, really hadn't gone down. It's just really a narrow side trading range. And if you look at all the times in the history, this is the narrowest range going back to nineteen eighty four, where the market was just extremely narrow. That's amazing, well, man. This, yeah. And we so were at small numbers in 1984. Is. Just to give you an update, folks, in 1980, the Dow Industrials was only at 803. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, wow. I know. Is that crazy? Yeah. Some, sometimes you see that, you know, in wild days, you see that in a day. But anyhow. Yeah, but right. Anyhow, exactly. Is, <laughs> yeah. So this trading range is, is going on. So we're, we're probably going to hit some. Uh, you know, just after a, a narrow trend, you know, it's like a Bollinger Band squeezing on a stock. Yes. It suggests a big move is coming. Well, the same thing happens with this ratio. The Bollinger, I should have put a Bollinger Bands on there. You can see that Bollinger Bands are really narrow going here. So we're going to have expansion of the Bollinger Bands at some point, you know, in my, my opinion, probably this year. And you're going to see a, a, a big surge. And you should see a surge through that trend line, according to the Weisskopf method. Once you break a trend line, right. you should see a sign of strength. So I'm, I'm thinking that's what's going to happen here. And I actually think we'll probably go go back up to, uh, the, you know, that red horizontal trend line going across there. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yep. Yeah, yeah I think which is pretty much, the, you know, kind of connected to some uh, some highs we had back in 2008 and some lows in the 1990s and whatever. Anyhow, that trend line is right around 0.17. I think we possibly get back to there. And, and the I'm cool thinking. thing is, folks, but, okay, is that, you know, when you come up to a line like this, like the last time, you know, we failed at that price. But even when you fail, folks, at a trend like that, it's a positive because the market has released information for you, which is so cool. Do you know what I mean? And yep. In this yep. particular case, it's it's really cool because 
we're aware of that we failed last time and the bottom line is that okay we'll see how this shakes out and it's 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 a black and white situation folks okay which is so cool man that's that's you know i mean of course i i want to see us break it because it's nice making money <laughs> on the upside yeah, yeah. um right you know but if you don't you don't and then you know we we, we plan out from that particular point so pretty cool right yeah or either we either we break that red trend line coming down from the 1960 or 1996 highs. And I got a blue dotted line there too. I see that. Yeah, which is the yeah. So you, you're going to break one or the other. Right. And so, but right. I think we're done breaking to the downside just because the way the market's kind of situated. But um, when I drew this chart, you know, to break that trend line, you need point point oh six. We're at point oh five seven. Wow. And we're kind of just sitting there. <laughs> um, and so uh, I'm, I'm thinking we're probably going to break it at some point, but we haven't broke it yet. And there's another one. Uh, if you look at the, the top one is RSI, next window down is the monthly inflation deflation ratio, which is also at a trend line. Uh, yeah. It did break it below the downside, but you didn't see a sign of weakness. Just like you kind of broke it, and nothing really happened. Right. So I'm, I'm think, I think we're going to break that dotted trend line. So I know we're going to another. Yep. Stay, stay, here. stay right there, so. folks. Tim and I come right back. Dow Industrials down 445. Nasdaq off 208. S and B's down 56. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Talk with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. We are talking markets. So Tim, uh, let's see. It would be uh, one, two, three, four. Num uh, number six. Yeah, let's go to six real oh, quick. Okay. Yep. I don't have a lot of time, but anyhow, this is a buy signal. We actually we got a buy signal back last October. We talked about it on yes. your, on your show, and it, it didn't really fail. It just it went up and kind of came back down again. Anyhow, it gave another buy signal. Uh, well, actually, I should explain what this is. This is a weekly inflation deflation ratio. Okay, and when the when the RSI falls below thirty and turns up, it gives a buy signal. And all those blue lines, uh, or uh, the top window is the RSI for that uh, ratio. Yes. So, and and all the lines across the chart uh, are the times when that ratio, when the RSI fell below thirty and turned back up. Last time that did was I think first part of March or something, or yeah, I think it was end of February, first of March. But you know, it gave a buy signal. Previous time in October, it gave the same buy signal, approximately about the same same price. So that buy signal really. First one didn't really fail. It just it did a double buy signal. Right. So anyhow, it's it's on a buy signal, and that's uh, so let's look at see where that buy signal is. Okay. Let's go to chart seven. Yes. There we go. Okay. Yeah, this is a momentum chart. It doesn't really try to pick out the bottoms or tops. It just measures if you're in a rally or a decline. When it's above zero, you're in a rally mode. And this is a 50-day average, so this is like 200. Two and a half months of data, and so it doesn't look at, at the smaller time frames. Kind of looks at the, a, lot of, a larger time frames. And as long as, which is the bottom window, which is the up down volume for the fifty day average of the up down volume for GDX, and it's above zero, it's on a buy signal. It's below zero, it's on a sell signal. And right now, you're still above zero, and we're at a trend line. If you look at the top window there. Not the top window, the second window down. I see it, yeah. To the neckline. And we're staying at that neckline with a ratio up around plus 10. So I'm thinking we're still got energy to bust through that trend line. You got to love it, man. Okay. Well, listen, man, Tim, it's always a pleasure. Until Thursday, you have a great one and a safe one. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I'll be coming right back with the update, folks. Stay right there.